Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. This week we're going to have a look at water-soluble pencils. Now they come in all different forms. They can contain watercolour, or ink, or even graphite. But they're all water-soluble. So we're going to look at the ones made by Derwent, and they're called Ink Tense Pencils. You can also get them in block form, so Ink Tense Blocks. So we'll look at both of those. Are you ready? Now today we're going to be looking at Derwent Ink Tents. An ink tents is a water-soluble ink and it comes in blocks and it comes in pencils. Let's have a look at those. Now the only difference between the blocks and the pencils is that there's more of it in the blocks. It's exactly the same ingredient but these are just much more useful for doing big areas and these are useful for doing small areas. So let's have a look and see how they work. So you use them just like watercolour pencils and the harder you press the more intense the actual pigment will be. You can draw individual lines like this, very little light lines, and if you press really hard, you'll get a very intense area. <laughs> Hence the word, ink tense. It's a play on words, ink tense and intense. Then with your watercolour brush, you just wet them. Now I'm making a big mistake here. I'm doing it deliberately. Can you see what that mistake is? I started off in the area where it's darkest. I should have started in the area where it's lightest. Because if you start in the area where you've got most pigment, you're going to drag that pigment up into the light area and you will eventually have everything the same colour. Let's do another one here. Let's move that up into the camera, that's better. So that's very dark and that's quite light. So then now if I take my watercolour brush and I start in the light area and work my way towards the dark area, can you see the difference? I'm not going to be dragging that dark colour into the light colour. And then if I want to blend in between the two, I can go back and do that. And you get a lovely transition. So watch out for that when you're using um, water-soluble pencils of any kind. Start in the light area, work towards the dark area. And also, when you're activating a colour, if you don't want to have a hard edge, then wet well, away, well outside the area that you want to finish your colour in and pull the colour in towards the pigment. Can you see how, how now that's going to make a lovely, lovely soft edge? I'm pulling the water into my pigment rather than pushing the pigment out into the water. And then I'll get that lovely soft edge. Clever, eh? <laughs> Can you see here, because it's touching, it's touching dry paper, there's a hard edge. But here, because I pulled the water in towards the pigment, it's got a lovely soft edge. And if you keep that water well away from where you want the pigment to finish, you will always get that lovely soft edge. I think when we first begin using these pencils, or using any kind of water-soluble pencil, we put down the pigment, and then we take our brush, and
and we activate it and we push it out like this. But because this edge here is, is touching dry paper, that edge will always be hard. Here, can you see, we've got a lovely soft edge. And I could take that wet area out as far as I wanted to. You could take it right out to here, you see. And there you've got that lovely, lovely soft edge. Here, hard edge. Let's have a look at doing a painting. Now I'm going to do a very simple little painting. I'm going to do a little pansy with some um, surrounding colours on the outside, some green on the outside, and just one little flower so you can see how the ink tense works. Now the first thing to do is to put on all my colours in the places where I want them. I would normally turn this around but I'm afraid of it going off the camera so I'm, I'm having to twist my arm around. Not a problem. There are no problems in life, just challenges. Only some challenges are bigger than others. <laughs> By the way, I forgot to mention the colours that I'm using with my Inktense pencils. I'm using Sun Yellow, Fuchsia, which is the lighter of the pinks, and then Red Violet for the darker colour. So in now with the darker colour. Always making sure my pencil marks are going in the direction of the veins of the flower. So all my pencil strokes are going towards the centre of the flower. Now when I activate this, if this is not dark enough, all I need to do is to wait for it to dry. And then I can re-wet it, because once these pencils have been activated and they dry, they are permanent, but we'll see how it works out first of all. Now for the exciting bit. So we'll start off with the yellow. Now I'm quite happy to have a hard edge out here. Do you remember how to, the way to get a soft edge was to wet outside and pull the water in but I'm quite happy to have a hard edge so that doesn't bother me at the moment. I won't do all the petals at once because otherwise it'll begin to dry too quickly. There's the lighter colour. Now here, I probably do want a soft edge, so I'm going to wet outside and pull my paint in. Pull my water in. See? Clever. 
cry. <laughs> Now I can go into the darker colour. If I did my darker colour first, I would spread it all over the all over the petal, which wouldn't be a good idea. And the lighter colour. Wet the outside of the petal and pull the water in. see that I am going to have to come in later with a little more dark paint when this is dried because I want this to be really really rich colour. Okay we'll let that dry off and then we'll come in and strengthen up the darks. Okay that's uh, that's dry now. Now let's go in again with the with the dark pencil. And strengthen up the strengthen up the dark area. You see, this is all permanent now that it's dry, so it won't matter what I put on the top of it, it's not going to lift what's underneath. I'm going to wet beyond where I want the colour to be so that I can float it into the wet area and then strengthen up the darks. I think the difference between ink tense pencils and watercolour pencils is the intensity of the colour. It really is so beautifully strong. I love watercolour pencils, but you don't get this depth of colour. At least I don't. Maybe it depends on the actual brand that you use. I'll flip those out into the water. Now I'll make sure that's completely dry and then we'll come in and put the green around the outside. Now when I put the green on, rather than having a dark area next to a light area with a hard line down the middle, I'm going to make certain that when I put the colours on, I actually overlap them. So one on top of the other, rather than one next to the other. I'll show you why. Can you see how you get a hard line? But here you get the colours blended together because one is on top of the other, rather than one sitting next to the colour beside it. 
So just something to bear in mind. I'll start off putting the colours in, but I might speed the camera up a little way so that you, can, uh, you don't have to watch me laboriously putting all the colours in. Now I can either use my Inktense blocks or I can use the Inktense pencils. It wouldn't make any difference. It might be easier to use the pencil in close to the flower and then go out to the blocks later. So I'll have some, I'll have some dark there. And I'll have a bit of dark here because there's a splodge there and I want to cover the splodge up. <laughs> As I said, there are no problems in life, only challenges. This is a slightly different, slightly different green. It's still, still quite dark. Well, now I think we need a slightly bigger brush for this. Now I'm going to put a stem on this little flower. I think it needs one. And we could do some suggestions of some, of some stalks or stems or leaves. Nothing definite, just, just a suggestion. Sorry, I lost the last couple of minutes on, on the camera, but all I've done is put in the little orange centre with an orange pencil and just one or two little, <coughs> excuse me, one or two little lines with the ink tense block, but I haven't activated it. I've, I've just left it as it was on the paper. And there we have the finished painting. Just an impression of a cool foliage background behind the beautiful, vibrant colours of the little pansy. 
Now you don't always have to activate your pencils with water. You can, if you want, use them as ordinary dry pencils, just like coloured pencils, to enhance a painting. You could use them to help with a watercolour painting that maybe needs a little bit of extra depth or a few details at the end. The watercolour blocks I sometimes use as an underpainting for my pastel work. I do an underpainting to get the tonal values and then I put the pastel over the top. So there are endless things that you can do with them. Do have a try with these, I think you will love them. If you haven't done so already, then consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon, because that lets you know when I upload another video for you. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.